This video is sponsored by Ren. Hi, so 2022's reading has been abysmal. Abysmal! I hardly rated anything five stars. I just, I just wanted to read some good uh. books. So I thought, I thought, why don't I watch every best books of 2022 video that comes up in my feed, write down all of the books that I own on my TBR or that I really want to read so will consider purchasing, put them in a jar, pick some out, and hopefully read some good fucking uh. books. So that's what I'm gonna do. So today is the 30th of December. We've still got a lot of people yet to post their best books videos, but I have watched every video that has come up on my subscription feed and I've written down all the books. I'm ready to start. So obviously I will keep adding books. Also my hair, look, this is already so chaotic. Yeah, so obviously I will be adding books more as more videos come out, but also the more times a book is mentioned, the more times it goes in the jar. So like, Babel is like on everyone's favorites list. It is already in my jar. One, two, three, four, five. It's already in there five times. So there's a high chance I'm probably gonna be reading Babel. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pick my first two reads. I'm gonna pick one that has an audiobook and one that doesn't have an audiobook or I can't get the audiobook unless it's from Audible or something. And we're gonna start reading and hopefully find some good books. I just want to read some good books. I have put all the books over here. So these are all the books that have come up on people's favorites of the year so far. Also, yes, I'm in my daughter's bed. I've put them all in this gorgeous Lord of the Rings inspired bowl from Alcrate. It's inspired by the Shire. It's the best thing I've ever seen. So I'm so excited. We're gonna pick out some books to read. Okay, book number one. I'm really nervous, but really excited. Okay. Whoa, whoa, they're all jumping out. Okay, two just jumped out, so I guess those are the two we're gonna pick. So first we have, wow, what a freaking surprise. I am so shocked. It's Babel. 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 The one, the only Babel by RF. Want. So that's book number one, and I know for a fact that I can get that audiobook. This is so random. <laughs> and then we have... Okay, I'm gonna start off with one that I think might be my favorite one of the year, and that's Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Um, I know for a fact I can listen to both of these on audiobook, so I'm not mad. I don't own Jurassic Park, but I do own Babel. So yes, I do own Babel. Here we go. Jurassic Park is on Scribd. 15 hours and 11 minutes long. I will download that. And... There, there might be a wait on Babel at my library. Let me see. Oh no, it's available 4th of January. That's just in like five days. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, so I will come back when the next batch of booktubers have uploaded their best books video and I'll pick some more books or I'll update you if I have something to say about these books. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So it's been about a week since I started this project and I had to prioritize reading some other books, but I finally started um, my first book for this project this morning. So I have picked up Babel. I am a whopping 19 pages in, I'm up to chapter two. Um, so I don't have much to say about this yet. The writing is impeccable as expected, but since it has been a whole week since I started, a ton more favorites videos have come out. So. My bowl is getting very, very full, and I thought it's probably time to pick out my next two books, even though I haven't finished my first two. So, I did end up getting out the physical copy of Jurassic Park out from my library, so we have that um, to read alongside the audiobook when I get to it. But let's just um, pick out our next two, because I can't wait any longer. I'm so excited. So, I feel like I need to like mix these more, but I don't know how to do that without them all falling out. Okay, let's just, let's just do this. Let's do it. Okay, we've got this one. So I'll put that down there. And this one. Okay, so we've got two. What are they? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, no way. Okay. The Secret History by Donna Tark. 
The Secret History by Donna Tart. Off the Secret History by Donna Tart. Um, I picked out The Secret History by Donna Tart. Apparently, um, just wants to pick out some really hefty books for me to read. But that's fine because I know this is available as an audiobook from my library. But I'm scared, okay, because it's very long, very chunky. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I picked that up. Okay, so, wow, okay. And this other one. What's it gonna be? Oh my god, I picked out Magnolia Parks. Magnolia Parks. We have Magnolia Parks. Magnolia Parks. Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. Okay, um, I don't own this, but I put it on because I'm very, very interested in it. So I'll have to get a hold of it somehow. Um, Magnolia Parks is a romance book um, that follows the high society of London. So it's basically Gossip Girl, but British, and a romance. <laughs> so that is very exciting. So those are my next two books. Should I pick up one more? Let's pick up one more. I can't. It's just too fun. It's just too much fun. Okay. We'll pick out one more and see how we go. Okay. Let's see what it is. This one. Oh my god! This one. You probably can't even see that. A Lady for a Duke. This is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. Um, this is another romance book, but we're following a trans man character. Um, she was pres presumed dead at Waterloo, um, but she comes back to town and reconnects with Grace Wood, um, who is suffering from PTSD from the war and he doesn't recognize her. So I think it's a romance between them. Friends to lovers mayhaps. Exciting. I have the audiobook of this on Audible, so perfect. Let's keep reading. Hi, it's been a little while. Excuse the mess behind me. Um, yeah, it's been a little while. I have been so sick with the worst cough I've ever had in my entire life. Like I am surprised that I haven't coughed up a lung. Thankfully it's not COVID though, but um, I really need to give you an update because I finished one of the books and I am part way through two more and I want to pick out the rest of the books that I want to read for this video because I, I have too many now. Like I, I could wait for more videos to come out, but like I already have all of these books like I can't possibly fit anything more in that little bowl. So we're just going to have to stop here. I'm gonna have to cut out so many coughing fits, oh my gosh. Because I just need to know the other books that I'm gonna read. I need to know, I need to know. So first let's talk about this book right here because I finished it and it broke me. It broke me. All I know now is pain. We definitely started off with a bang because this is definitely getting five stars from me. This is absolutely fantastic. We're following Robin. Um, who grew up in Canton, but when his family dies from cholera, he is picked up by this English professor and taken to Oxford. And we're following him throughout his um, early life until he actually attends Oxford University, where he is at the Royal Institute of Translation because he specializes in languages. And in this world, there is a type of magic that sort of can power everything. We use words of translation and inscribe them um, onto these silver bars and if the person who is like an expert in that language utters that word then the bar will work for them I think. I don't know it's kind of hard to explain, kind of hard to wrap my head around to be honest especially because I'm sick but oh my gosh RF Kuang's writing is just absolutely stunning. You can just tell she is so intelligent and the themes of colonialism and race were just so expertly discussed in this book. This was just, yeah, outstanding. Five stars. I am broken though. <laughs> so then I started Magnolia Parks on my Kindle. I'm currently like 25% of the way through. And am I loving it? Maybe. This is essentially like British Gossip Girl and I'm living, I'm living. It is terrible, but at the same time, fantastic. Like sometimes the writing is so beautiful and then other times it's so cringe. Like I don't 
understand how you can have excellent writing and cringe writing all at the same time. Because sometimes the characters break the fourth wall and talk to you and like, he's the hottest guy in London, but you already knew that, didn't you? Just like, uh, <laughs> this <is> weird. <laughs> anyway, I'm enjoying it though. Um, and then I have also started Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. And I am about 100 pages into this and I am loving it. Um, some of the science, like genetic stuff, is going way over my head because I'm listening to the audiobook. But it's fun. It's fun. I'm really enjoying it. And I haven't watched the movie before, which I feel like is a crime. So yeah, those are the two I'm currently reading. So I have yet to start The Secret History and um, A Lady for a Duke. But I figured now it's time to pick out the last books that I'm going to be reading for this vlog. I think I'm going to pick out five more to make it a total of ten books for the vlog. Hang on, I'm going to call my booktube besties and see if they want to see what gets picked. Okay, I'm going to pick out five more. And the ones that are in here the most are definitely Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. And Delilah Green doesn't care. Let's do this. So you're doing five more. I'm doing five more, so there's a total of ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. Let's do this. They're all gonna fall out. It's so full. I'm gonna try and get one from the bottom. I did take them all out and mix them up, but still. <gasps> okay. Okay. Ha! Ah! Okay. Wow, what a surprise! It's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The book is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And that is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I'm actually really happy about that because um, one of the prompts for the Magical Readathon year-long thing is water on the cover, so I could use that for next month. That's perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I'll go get the books after I've picked them all. Okay. You're hoping for Delilah Green, aren't you? Wow, what a surprise! It's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow! <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, that's unexpected. This was only in there once. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. That is very unexpected. Okay. But it's short and I have the audiobook narrated by Stephen Fry, who is like my favorite audiobook narrator, so that's great. Three more. What? This is so weird. I keep getting things that are like only in there once. This is another sci-fi, adult sci-fi. This is the book of the unnamed midwife. I got the book of the unnamed midwife. Ooh. It's like a dystopian... Oh my god, that's so weird. Okay. I really want Delilah Green! I want it so it can count for Buzzwordathon for the verb challenge. Okay. What's this one? What? <laughs> I kind of random babes. I kind of don't want to read this one because I'd have to reread the first book. So the first middle grade book that I want to discuss is Amari and the Great Game by Baby Alston. Amari and the Great Game. Nah, don't bother rereading the first one. You'll be fine. But I don't remember anything. That's fine. It'll it's a middle grade. It'll tell you. It'll help you. Okay. So that means It'll we've got we've got one more. If it's not Delilah Green, I'm rioting. Or should I just keep picking until I get Delilah Green? Okay. <laughs> and I'm getting books that I don't own either. I will never shut up about these. It starts now. You will never hear the end of it. I don't know the series title for these. I think it's called the Stud Club series, which is why I won't refer to it as the series title. This is the One Dance with a Duke series by Tessa Dare. Lord, take me now. I got one. I, I got One Dance with a Duke by Tessa Dare, which is on witty novels. That was so unexpected. I can see Delilah Green right there, and I didn't pick it. Okay, that's okay. Okay, I'll go get the books. 
and we'll cry together. That was chaotic and joy. And I also really wanted to pick out everything I know about love. I really wanted to pick out that one too. Okay, that was chaotic. <laughs> ah, okay. So, I'm glad I did get tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I really want to read this and it's also a part of my 2023 five-star predictions. So, I really want to get to it. And for the magical readathon. So, I'm so keen. This is about two kids who meet in a hospital gaming room. And it follows them, I believe, um, eight years later when they find each other again, I think. I don't know, but it, this is on like everyone's list. It is in there so many times. So yes, we've got that one. Then we've got The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I, I cannot believe I picked this out. It was only in there once because it was on Ravenhead Reader's List. Um, but this obviously is a classic. It's something to do with a portrait where, I don't know, the portrait gets older and uglier instead of him or something. I, I, I don't know. But I'm obsessed with this edition. I'm excited to listen to the audiobook. So we've got that. Um, then we've got the book of the unnamed midwife. Let's look this up on Goodreads. This was on Books with Emily Fox's list. Again, was only in there once. It's by Meg Ellison. Oh, this is terrifying. Okay, it says, In the wake of a fever that decimated the Earth's population, killing women and children and making childbirth deadly for the mother and infant, the midwife must pick her way through the bones of the world. She once knew to find her place in this dangerous new one. Oh, dear. It has an average rating of 4.15 with almost 18,000 ratings. That's a very good rating. It is a series though. I don't want to start a new series, but that's fine. It's got three books in the series. Um, okay, so we're gonna be reading that. And then we've got Amari and the Great Game. <laughs> what a crime. I still have the sticker on, hang on. So this is the sequel to Amari and the Knight Brothers, which I absolutely loved, but I cannot remember a single thing about it which is terrible so I feel like I'd have to reread this to read this but Kara says she doesn't think I'll have to because it's a middle grade it'll explain everything that happened to me in the last book but I don't know we'll see and the last book is one that I'm actually really excited for it was on Whitney's video from Whitney novels um, and it is One Dance with the Duke by Tessa Dare. Tessa Dare is my favourite historical romance author, so I'm not mad about this one at all. I'll have to see if there's an audiobook. If there's no audiobook, I don't know, I might get it on my Kindle, or I might just order a copy for myself. Who knows? Those are the 10 books that we're going to read for this video, but we're going to have a short break, and I'm going to unbox a couple of our crate boxes that I've gotten over the last little while so if you've already seen people unbox these i'll leave timestamps down below you can skip ahead so but i really really want to show you guys so we have the november owl crate box um i know this is a little bit late but it did arrive a little bit late okay um but i'm so excited about everything that's in here because we have the last bowl in the lord of the rings bowl series which i've been using for this video so the last one is Gondor inspired look oh my gosh I am absolutely in love with these like could they be any more beautiful I don't think so so we have that and then we have this toothbrush um, holder with a bamboo toothbrush inside and this is inspired by the raven cycle it says the trees speak latin on it Perhaps there is magic in the forest. Um, that's what it says on this little bag. And inside is this little soap dish. It's so cute. The leaf comes out. The forest whispered and watched. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this is inspired by. The bear and the nightingale. So that's really cool. I'm gonna put that straight in the bathroom now. Um, then we have this month's literary luggage. This one's inspired by From Blood and Ash. That's what it looks like. And then we have this Dark Forest hand warmer. 
This is inspired by Lake's Edge and Among the Beasts and Briars, which are two previous Owl Crate books. So it has a quote on one side and a quote on the other. These are so cool and while I don't need them while I live in Australia, um, they're great for when I visit Korea and anywhere overseas that's actually cold. Um, the last thing before the book is like the best thing ever because it is this year's Owl Crate reading planner and I am absolutely obsessed with it. I have been using it and it's amazing. And then the book for November is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. I believe this is based on a series of like tweets that this author made where like the audience got to decide through polls what happened to the main character which is very interesting um hemlock hemlock falls isn't like any other town so you won't find it on a map your phone won't work there and the forest outside town might just kill you wow the main character is called winnie wednesday what a name she wants nothing more to, than to join the luminaries the ancient order that protects winnie's town and the rest of humanity from the monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. But her father was exposed as a witch and a traitor, her family has been shunned, but on her 16th birthday she can take the deadly luminary hunter trials and prove herself true and loyal or die trying. <gasps> yes! I love survival game books like The Hunger Games. Yes, okay. This just got bumped up on my TBR. This is very exciting. Um, the book itself is freaking stunning. Look at that. Look at the end papers. Can you believe it? There's the signature. And there's artwork under the dust jacket. Stunning. I am actually really excited for this one. So that is the November Outcrate box. Now I do have the December Outcrate Junior box. So. We have this. I got so excited when I saw this packaging because it looks like Saved by the Bell. Does it not look like Saved by the Bell? What an iconic show. But this is a mug inspired by Back to the Future. So the mug is actually a little bit different from this design. I, if, if the mug was just this design, I would love it. But I understand this is for kids, not for adults. But anyway, it's still very cute. Um, this is what it looks like. <laughs> it's really adorable. Then we've got this little metal book container. This isn't inspired by any particular book, but it's the book of big ideas. Um, it's really cute. Then we have some socks. And what are these inspired by? The Mysterious Benedict Society, which I have never read. But Alcrate socks are honestly the best. I wear Alcrate socks all the time all the time so we've got those then we've got some um thinking putty um which is very fun um next we have this square what do you call this cubed gridded i have one brain cell today it's a notebook um this is inspired by black panther <gasps> stunning and then we've got this this is a series of unfortunate events inspired bandana. I have not looked at it yet, so let's look together. Ooh, very nice. Is that everything? Is it, is it, is it? I think so. So the book is called Futureland Battle for the Park by H.D. Hunter. This looks so fun. It's set in 2048 and it's set at a futuristic theme park. But I think things start to go wrong and kids start to go missing. And we're following the kid of the parents who created the park. It sounds really fun. And it seems to have some mixed media in there too. Wow, awesome. And of course it comes with the little character card and the author letter. That sounds so fun. Okay, ciao for now. I'm going to keep coughing up a lung and reading these books. I'll let you know when I finish the next one. Wow, I am not looking good <laughs> and I am not feeling good. It's a few days later, quite a few days later, I am very sick. So I think I have to go back to the doctor because something, something is wrong. Um, but I'm here to update you on 
books. I finished Jurassic Park and I liked it. I didn't love it. I gave it like a 3.5. Not sure if I'm going to read the second and final book in this duology. Let me know. Do you think I should read it? Have you guys read it? Is it good? I don't know because to me this was just fine. Um, I also watched the movie for the first time and I liked the movie slightly more than the book. Um, they did change a few things but I don't know, it was a little bit more fun. But it didn't blow me away. And I feel like Michael Crichton is just like the American Matthew Riley. And I feel like Matthew Riley kind of does better. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all the science stuff just went straight over my head. Um, the audiobook was good. What else do I have to say? Nothing. It was just fine. So look, you win some, you lose some. Then today, while I was cleaning, I finished listening to the audiobook of Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. So both of these were actually on Gavin's best books video. Shout out to Gavin. Um, and this was great. Um, this is the sequel to Amari and the Night Brothers. We've already talked about this. Um, I think I liked the first book more. I gave the first book like 4.5 stars. I gave this one a 4. Um, just because... Some of the, there was like some miscommunication stuff that I, I just hate miscommunication as a trope and just some things that kind of annoyed me and this book just really felt like a setup book for book three. Like, I don't know, like not enough happened in this book for it to like stand on its own, you know what I mean? But it was still really good. Amari is just such a great character. It's just such an interesting world and yeah. So yeah, I, I liked it. I really did like it. Four stars. Then I decided um, I'm going to switch up things a little bit and I'm going to add two more books to my T two more books to my TBR because they came in as audiobooks from my library. I had them on hold because I was going to read them anyway, but they were on people's favorite books videos. So I was like, well, why not just include them in this video if I'm going to be reading them anyway? So I've started listening to Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Then of course Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Um, this book was actually gifted to me from my friend Shani from Shani and Books. Um, so I am like an hour into the audiobook which is probably like I don't know 70 pages into the book and I have to say I was expecting it to be a little bit different. I was expecting this to be more literary and more quote worthy but it's not <laughs> so far. It's honestly so far just her going on about how she was a drunk mess basically. <laughs> um, but it was like interesting listening to her talk about like MSN and stuff because like that was huge when I was in high school. Like I was on MSN for hours every day after school. Um, so it was like a throwback listening to her talk about that. It is interesting but Dolly is so different to me like wow i lived a sheltered life let me tell you compared to dolly um so it is interesting uh but i will update you when i'm further into the book but the other book that i'm going to be reading next is the final gambit by jennifer jennifer lynn barnes this is the final book in the inheritance games trilogy the final gambit by jennifer lynn barnes i really enjoyed the first two books However, neither of them got a full five stars, so I don't, I doubt this will get a five stars as well, but I am curious to see how everything wraps up, and I was going to read it anyway, like I said, so we're going to read them this long. So these are the next two books I'm reading, and then we'll get back into the previously decided books. I also, the other day, went through and like unhauled a crap ton of books, so my shelves are looking kind of sad right now but um yeah that's a lot of books to unhaul so um if you live in australia and you're interested keep an eye out my depop shop is linked down below hey friends again it's been a literal little over a week so it's time for me to update you but first i want to thank the sponsor of today's video ren i don't know about you guys but thinking about climate change and the state of our planet and the environment is 
terrifying to me and super overwhelming and it's so easy to feel helpless like what can one person possibly do to change the fate of our planet and that's where ren comes in it is an amazing website that calculates your carbon footprint and gives you ways to offset it by funding various diverse projects like tree planting mineral weathering and rainforest protection it is so easy you basically just do this really simple quiz that then calculates your carbon footprint and then whatever projects that you decide to help fund you actually get updates of those projects like it tells you like exactly how many trees you planted or gives you photo or video updates and it's one thing to go and plant a bunch of trees but the great thing about Wren is that they also fund projects that help to actually change policies so that we can actually get this under control. I don't know about you guys but since becoming a mum I often think about my daughter's future and what the world is going to be like in 50 years time or when I'm not around. Um, what is the planet going to look like for her? Is it going to be livable? It's actually a terrifying thought. So I'm so glad that Ren reached out to me because it feels like I'm actually doing something to help. So they have a variety of projects you can choose from and just looking at one of the projects it's um, clean cooking fuel for refugees. Not only are they funding a project that um, prevents deforestation and reduces cooking emissions but they're also improving quality of life for refugees which I think is amazing. So if you're looking for a super easy way to combat the climate crisis i definitely recommend checking out ren and the first 100 people to sign up using the link in my description will have an extra 10 trees planted in their name so thank you so much to ren for sponsoring today's video now let's discuss the last three books i read so um the next book i finished for this video is magnolia parks by jessa hastings when i first talked about this book i mentioned that i was loving it <laughs> I ended up giving this two stars and that's generous. We're basically following this toxic relationship between our main character Magnolia and this guy called BJ. Now three years previously to the start of this book BJ cheated on Magnolia so they broke up but they have this like toxic relationships still where they like sleep in the same bed like every night but they don't kiss they don't sleep together but they are like constantly still in each other's lives but like constantly hurting each other this also has the fake dating trope in it because magnolia fake dates this amazing guy called tom england like tom england writes why is he not endgame i don't understand i just don't understand how magnolia and bj are endgame when bj is literally a piece of trash he i would not go near him with a 10 foot pole i just I, I i don't understand i don't understand and every single time a character came onto the page magnolia described every single piece of clothing that they were wearing what they, what does what designers designed it and all this and it's just like shut up i don't care i don't want to read a whole paragraph about her freaking chanel outfit i don't care i just don't understand i don't understand the hype around this book i will not be continuing on with the series and i gave it two stars then i finished off everything i know about love by dolly alderton this was another disappointment i gave this three stars i think because i just did not relate to dolly at all <laughs> but that's just a personal thing like if i don't relate to the main character or the person that the book is about i don't tend to like it as much and i get it we just we grew up with very different lives very different upbringings but i just i just didn't love it and again i was expecting something different i was expecting it to be full of like quotes that i would underline and i only tabbed one Thing. Um, I'll read it to you if you like. I had equated love with thinness and to my horror reinforcement of this belief was everywhere and a woman can never really be thin enough that's the problem. It is not seen as too high a price to pay to be hungry all the time or to restrict an entire food group or to spend four nights a week in a fitness first gym. To be an empirically attractive young man you just have to have a nice smile, an average body type, give or take a stone, a bit of hair and be wearing an all right jumper. To be a desirable woman the sky's the limit. Have every surface of your body waxed. Have manicures every week. Wear heels every day. Look like a Victoria's Secret angel even though you work in an office. It's not enough to be an average sized woman with a bit of hair and an alright jumper. That doesn't cut it. 
we're told we have to look like the women who are paid to look like that as their profession which i was like wow true but yeah again this was just okay three stars i'm sad i'm really sad and then finally i finished the final gambit by jennifer lynn barnes and again another disappointment this is definitely my least favorite in the trilogy it was so boring and i do like the way it wrapped up i can't really go into specifics but it was just boring i don't yeah um and because i didn't really like it i'm going to be unhauling the entire trilogy and putting them on my depop if anyone wants to buy them <laughs> so six books have been read for this first part of this video yes i'm gonna cut it off here um and do a part two otherwise it's gonna be way too long but ranking wise let's rank it okay so at the very bottom is magnolia parks what even is that book and then the final gambit and then probably everything i know about love then jurassic park amari and at the top of course we have battle so we only got one five star out of this project so far which is uh not great folks but hopefully the second half of this video we'll find some five star reads. Let me just remind you of the books that you can expect in part two. We have The Secret History by Donna Tartt, A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, <coughs> sorry my cough, um, The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison, and One Dance with the Duke by Tessa Dare. So can look forward to my thoughts on those but that's gonna be it for today's video thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to ren for sponsoring today's video see you guys next time Bye.